Shanks' hockey could be just as busted as Joy Boy's. I'ma just go with the assumption that y'all saw that film Red Movie. I don't think y'all heard me. Did you see that final sequence in the film Red Movie? All right, so uh, check out this uh, exclusive. Al Kaino? Uh, yes. This dude Shanks, bros only got one arm. His speed is different. His hockey is stupid. Where is Shanks right now? Oh, and he said that if we want this High School Musical extra, we better be prepared to die. Oh, hell no. Nah. Y'all not paying me enough for this. Oh, uh, yeah, nah, bro. I'm good. Uh, I'm going to spend the night at his house. <laughs> yeah, I got that straight from Oda himself. We're wrapping up Egghead. Again! Yeah! Scratch that. Let's call this chapter Tying Up Loose Ends. Shanks' hockey is actually stronger than Joy Boy's. Who? Stop the cow. <laughs> Joy Boy or Jay Riches to the ladies strikes fear into the heart of Emu the same way street level thugs whisper in corners about Batman. They even both come with their own personal silhouettes. Think about it, man. Think about it. So I couldn't come up with anything to scam you guys into subscribing to my channel. So hit that like and subscribe button and join the notification gang. Because if I don't at least get 30 subscribers, my wife said that she won't cook dinner. And as you can already see, I'm already going catabolic. Dorian Bragi said that Joy Boy's hockey is stronger than Shanks's. Well, uh, let's unpack that. Now, this entire segment is speculative, speculating, speculation, theoretical. Thought I lost it there. Now, we can only scale whose hockey's actually stronger based on what we've seen so far. Shanks in film Red unleashed a wave of Conqueror's hockey enough for Fujitora to resheath his sword and for Kizaru to reevaluate his loyalties to the Navy. Have any of y'all ever received a job offer so good it made you want to quit your current job that day? Basically, kind of like that. That same hockey had vice admirals on their knees. Not like that. Psych a lot. Exactly like that. Yes, Diddy. All to save his daughter, who was previously cast in the Disney classic, High School Musical. Uh, I'm pretty sure her voice wasn't that deep, but uh, puberty. Shanks even used his Conqueror's hockey to forcibly eject Green Bull straight out of Wano. Imagine somebody's presence just being so strong. Now, bearing in mind, Shanks wasn't even in Wano. Dude was passing through. Nah, this dude is different. It kind of reminds me of a time during my childhood Pops was in the car and I was riding shotgun. And of course, my little brother's in the back. So for context, I skipped school, but I never got caught. Well, on the contrary, my brothers were actually at school and conveniently, they both got in trouble despite going to two different schools. Irrelevant, but I digress. We in the whip and we messing around. And of course, my pops yells at my brother and he's just like, sleep. And all of a sudden, five minutes later, this dude was knocked out. Now the previous me, pre One Piece was just me thinking that that was just my pops talking. But the current me, enlightened by the God himself, Goda, finally understands and I've come to the elite and dynamic conclusion that that was Conqueror's hockey. Yeah, yeah, it actually exists. Just, just want to put that out there. Yeah. Either way, Shanks is nice. J Money's hockey is completely busted. Bro's hockey put the biggest buster call till date to sleep. He sent the Gorosei packing. He beat them out of their yokai forms, returned them back to base, and sent them on a first class ticket back to Mary Jawa. This almost reminds me in the granola arc when Gas punched Vegeta in the gut so hard. <laughs> Dude lost his power up <laughs> and he went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> that 
that same hockey had Emu huffing and puffing. He almost fell into a face reveal. Oh, hell no. I mean, I saw it. I mean, you got to squint and really look from the corner of your eye before, you know, you can see a little something, something. I mean, I still don't know whether Emu a boy or girl, but that's besides the point. Uh, I, I saw a little skin and it looked like a regular page, but that that's not the point. I can't wait till that part of the chapter gets animated. Only a whole year to wait. At least at that point, we can see whether Emu a boy or a girl. I don't know why I'm so focused on that, but you know, uh, I'm, I'm just trying to check. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Shanks, look, you cool and all, but... 16. You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. Vegapunk should arguably have better future sight than Katakuri because the way he orchestrated this plan should actually be studied. Exhibit B. So Vegapunk is actually dead, which is shocking, but not for the reason you actually think. Basically, people in One Piece don't really die. And I mean, when they actually do die, it actually hits pretty hard. Rest in peace to the real ones, Whitebeard and Ace. You know, y'all held it down. Y'all held it down for real, for real. Kinemon in Wano got clubbed in the head by Kaido so hard, I genuinely thought he got cut in half. Bro was breathing easy the moment he found out he was good. Hawkins' death was so underwhelming, I didn't even know he had actually died. Bro legitimately hit his head on the wall and went straight for the ground, dead and cooked. Three of the Vegapunks basically discover who the traitor is, and through years, months, and days, and hours, they finally come to the grand conclusion that it is York. Well, the Vegapunks are based on the seven deadly sins, roughly, but York's character specifically is actually based on greed, so when you break it down in that capacity, I'm not really surprised. And well, Oda definitely took a different turn with the seven deadly sins in comparison to Full Metal Alchemist because greed in Full Metal Alchemist was a complete villain. I mean, he had one of the most insane character arcs I've seen till date. But Wrath? Oh, nah. Yeah, dude, Wrath was the child who you left in the forest and you prayed for the very worst. Real spit. So they discovered that York stole a part of the Mother Flame the same mother flame that Emu probably used to disappear Lelouchia. And at that point, Vegapunk put his best Bruce Willis impression and literally sat there and thought, today is a good day to die. If Emu can disappear a set of people who actually did nothing wrong, imagine what he gonna do to people he know, kinda, who actually did something wrong. Vegapunk's sitting there like, huh, <laughs> like, look, if that's what he gonna do to them, I mean, I was born at night, not last night. Vegapunk overhears a conversation with the Gorosei, and at this point, they're fully aware that he's been researching the Void Sentry, which is taboo by their standards. Vegapunk being marked for death makes preparations by putting the Denden Mushi inside of Emeth as a way to basically air out the Gorosei's dirty laundry. So the preparations are done, and usually at the end of the day, the Vegapunks usually take some time to actually synchronize their thoughts, which was actually a part of the way they discovered that York was actually the traitor. I mean, there's a bunch of discrepancies and well, two plus two wasn't exactly four. So as a way to bypass that, they erase their memories as a way to bypass York finding out about the plan, eh, especially during the whole software update. Vegapunk dying, I mean, it does make sense. Ain't no way the government gonna just let him walk. Bro will have a chip on his shoulder for the rest of his life. On a side note, Bonnie is definitely joined the Straw Hats because at this point in time, just like Vegapunk has been marked and was branded for death, so has Bonnie. Or so was Bonnie. Yeah. 12 years old with the power to command the highest beings in artificial human evolution. You are not walking away. At least not alive. The Straw Hats are on route to Elbath and well, I guess it's time to party. Kind of. Location switch up. So I guess we back on the ship with the giants. We got old man Luffy, the giants chilling, the money all the way up. Okay, not really, but you know what I mean. Regardless, everybody's out of danger. And from everything that transpired on Egghead, we know them bounties about to be nice. Especially after Emu barking. Elbath is the land of the giants and at this point just needs to be rebranded as Usopp's moment. The last time he got any sort of power up 
was literally back in Dress Rosa, which at this point may have arguably been wrapped up almost a decade ago. This arc needs to be an arc where Usopp gets insane character development and a power up considering that Elbaf is the land of his dreams. Usopp wants to be a brave warrior of the sea, so I need to see something brave not stupid i figured i needed to make that distinction because sometimes people can kind of get those definitions misconstrued vegapunk prior to passing actually wanted to let the straw hats know that he wants them to be the ones to find the one piece well don't worry my boy i'm sure Oda's sure not to disappoint between luffy being the main character and the straw hats being the main cast i'm pretty sure Oda gonna work something nice rest easy my guy at least expectations for Elbaf. i'm hoping that we do get a hint or we see the man marked by flame i'm definitely curious to see how luffy will respond to the blackbeard pirates disappearing one his brother which i mean already happened but then garp also there's so much that's actually happened outside of egghead to the point where i'm genuinely curious to see how the egghead incident is about to change the world and throw the one piece world into complete chaos but yeah no break next week so i will be back here with another review leave your thoughts below what did you like about the chapter what did you dislike about the chapter where do you think the story's going next well i mean it's going to elbap but i'm pretty sure before we hit elbap we're gonna have a nice intermission but yeah like comment subscribe and i'll holler y'all later man peace